Okay. It sounds good. How's the mic sound? Yeah. Good. good. You're all thumbs up. Oh, thanks, kids. <laughs> hey, it's really great to be here. You know, I've come to West Woodland a fair bit because um, when I coached my um, son, Kian, in, in basketball, and my daughter, Mia, they practiced down here. They're now at Salmon Bay and Lincoln Hill, so they're a little older than you guys. So we're here today to announce, uh, to talk about our St. Francis School Program as we announced in our budget, <coughs> excuse me, as we announced in our budget speech on Monday, we have an additional $800,000 in this year's budget for Safe Routes to Schools. And we were talking there about how we can connect kids to their neighborhood schools. And that's not just about transportation. In 1969, when I was 10 years old, and in, I guess that would have been the third grade, 48% um, of children aged 5 to 14 years of age walked or bicycled to school, 48%. And I was one of those kids. It was a special treat when I got driven to school. In 2009, and this is a nationwide statistic, 13% of children 5 to 14 years of age usually walk or bicycle to school. And that's really a dramatic drop. And that has uh, very significant consequences for health. We know that uh, the health of our children is affected by the amount of daily activity they get into their lives. Um, and it also has significant consequences for safety as well. Part of the reason uh, I know as a parent, um, we, a lot of the reasons we're nervous about our kids walking or biking to school is safety. And uh, it's, a, it's a legitimate and serious concern. In fact, Celia here today showed with me the results of her research. This is Celia. And I just discovered this when I got here. But she went up to 3rd Avenue and measured the speed of cars traveling on 3rd Avenue uh, northwest in the 20 mile an hour zone using a radar gun. And here's what she found. Um, in the PM uphill, 84% of the cars were going over 20. Um, in the downhill, 80% as well. But 20% were going 30 miles or over. So it's a, it's a serious issue around schools, the, the speeds at which children drive. And by the way, this is a very well done experiment, Celia. Um, so this is a serious issue, and this is one of the, as we know, one of the biggest challenges for children in getting to schools is having safe crossings. So part of the Greenways movement is about taking residential streets, not main streets, taking residential streets and making them safer for walking and bicycling, and then when the Greenway approaches an arterial, you create a safe crossing to get across the arterial. That's oftentimes the biggest challenge on the route. Our side streets are often a lot safer because people expect to see uh, children or, or, or parked cars or moving cars in the narrower, so they drive safer, but they can be made safer. But then when you get to a busy arterial, how do you cross? So that's part of the expense. And again, personal story, I set my son, Kian, off to school this morning. He's a seventh grader at Salmon Bay, and he has to go from Greenwood to Salmon Bay. That requires crossing 8th and 15th, and that's a big deal for him to get over to Salmon Bay. And you want to have safe crossing, and well, it's, maybe it's okay for an adult like me or the adults here to be on the busy arterials. We'd like to have nice, safe neighborhood streets for our kids to walk on and bike on, and when they reach the arterial, have a safe crossing. So that's a big part of what the Greenways program is about, is creating those safe streets and safe crossings of arterials. We've also announced uh, this month our Be, S Be Super Safe, our new road safety campaign. And we launched the campaign because we know that um, about... 20 plus people a year in the city of Seattle, whether driving, walking, or biking, are killed on our roadways. Most of them are in cars. Yes. Then after that, it's pedestrians. Then after that, it's, it's bicyclists. And we know we can avoid those accidents. And for every fatality, there's a lot more serious injuries. So reducing speeds, those numbers that we were just sharing with you from Celia, a car going 20 miles an hour has the opportunity to stop, and if there is a collision, there's a very small likelihood of fatality or serious injury if a car is going 20 miles an hour or less. When it gets up to 30 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour, we're talking about very serious injuries and fatalities. So being, for cars to slow down and be super safe, for bikers and walkers to be aware of others on the road and, and be super safe, that's what we're all working on. And I want to thank our crossing guards here, too, for helping everyone be super safe today. So. Um, with that, I'll close. This is, this is, as you can gather from my discussion, um, personal to me as a parent, and it's personal to me um, because I know how much all the parents in this city care about their kids. They want them to lead active, healthy lives, and we all want them going to school and enjoying it. 
so I'm really uh, glad that we are able to take some dollars this year and put it into St. Brown's Discourse. So with that, I'd like to introduce the principal. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. I want students and parents to take note that the mayor rode his bike to school today. So how many students that are here rode your bike to school today? Good. How many walked? Okay. We're doing pretty well. I ride my bike on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, I tell kindergartners that one of my most important jobs as principal is to make sure that they're safe. And I'm glad to have the help of this community in doing that. Uh, we have our safety committee that meets monthly to talk about safety issues at this school. Would you, most people raise their hand? I think they're, they're here. Um, they did, uh, they did the, uh, the annual walk audit, which pointed out some of the areas that we have as concerns around here. And Brian Doherty from the city department has been in helping the safe co safety committee to figure out things that we can do to make those, uh, walk routes to school safe, and we appreciate that. I have lots of parent volunteers, some of whom organize the walk to school buses. So instead of getting on a bus, you get on a walking school bus. And Sheila uh, Kane is organizing that this year. We also have district-sponsored crossing guards, and they've helped collect some of our data. We have real concern about uh, Northwest Market and Fifth, where we have a stoplight but people don't are coming down the hill and you sometimes go through the light. And so we have an adult crossing guard down there to help students. And we still need uh, the support of the police department, which we have had in monitoring that issue. And then, of course, Katie Barrett, our PE teacher over here, uh, trains our safety patrol who really do a good job out here in areas that students can manage. So thanks, safety patrol, for being here. Um, so as, as the mayor said, the most important thing that we need from the community is just watching those speed limits in areas where kids are walking. Because those kids are not only walking to and from school, but they're also walking to the playground. And we have a playground that uh, it was helped uh, to refurbish with the neighborhood grant. So we appreciate the fact that the neighbors use it and we want them to get here safely. So Sheila, did you want to say anything about the walk to school program? Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, the timing is really great for this because we are actually just starting up our um, walk and wheel month of October. So there are going to be a lot more kids walking to school this month, uh, of the month of October. So I like the awareness being raised now. So I do um, help out with our school's um, walking school bus. Uh, we have several of them. Um, I'm part of the largest one of about 20, 20 to 25 kids. and just as many parents who are walking kids to school every single day. So we are well aware of the need for safe crossings. We cross a lot of busy streets on our way in and see a lot of cars zooming by and um, markings on the roads and lights are gonna be very helpful. So thank you to Mayor's office for this effort. Okay, thank you. We really appreciate it. I mean, you can just see how this matters. So questions from the media. Mayor, can you talk about some of those physical improvements to uh, streets sure. that are included in this plan? Yes, I can. As soon as I pull out my talking points again, <laughs> I, can, I can give you some specific descriptions. I have too many pockets. So we identified, uh, there are three specific places where we've identified three schools where we want to do uh, greenways. And they're listed, McGilvra, Beacon Hill, West Woodland are the three that we have listed. So at West Woodland, for example, we'll upgrade one of the main crossings that kids use to, to get to school here. And uh, the upgrade will include a full signal, uh, new mark crosswalks and curb ramps. I'll need help to identify exactly which crossing that's the, the 8th and uh, 58th and 8th. 58th and 8th. So that's an example I was talking about of the uh, busy arterial being an, an important place for kids to cross. And there's no signal where the signals sort north and south of 58 on 8. What's the nearest one to the south? Market. And the nearest one to the north is 65th. Yeah, so from Market to 65th, there's not a signalized crossing. And that can be a real challenge for kids to cross a busy arterial. 
you know, again, easier for adults to make those judgment calls, harder for kids. So having the full signal makes a difference there. Um, at Beacon Hill Elementary, we'll build curb bulbs, curb ramps, and a pedestrian island uh, to help get to Beacon Hill. At McGilvra in Madison Park, we'll build a sidewalk extension, curb bulbs, and curb ramps. So the idea of the curb bulb is when you have a wide street, what you can do is, um, in, in the space that might be used for parking, it's near an intersection, so it's probably not used for parking anyway, you extend the sidewalk out a number of feet on either end. So you shorten the crossing length, and also the person that comes up to the crosswalk is now that much further out. They're safe, they're behind a curb, um, they're where they're supposed to be, but they're more visible to drivers, so it's more likely that a driver will stop for somebody when they're waiting at a curb bulb to cross the crosswalk than if they're, you know, that six feet or eight feet back where the sidewalk traditionally was. So curb bulbs are a really good engineering signal, physical signal for people to slow down because they'll, they'll see the, the crosswalk will be more visible to them and the person waiting at the crosswalk will be, be more visible. Um, th there's a mix of things you do. So this idea of engineering is really important. Drivers often drive at the speed that the road suggests to them is safe. So wide road, wide lanes, multiple lanes, drivers feel safe, and we're all susceptible to that. Um, I'm, we're not trying to pick up drivers here. We've been really clear about that. But if you narrow the lanes um, in, a, in a roadway where there's not a lot of traffic, add a bike lane, like for example, it's done on Greenwood Avenue North by the main north of 90th. They, they added a bike lane there. Put in the curb bulbs, put in the marked crosswalks. Those are all visual signals to driver that other people are present, maybe kids are present, maybe I should slow down. And most drivers respond to those signals. So the engineering of our roads is really critically important to sending the signals to people that you don't have the road to yourself. It's not safe to, to just uh, go on autopilot to get home. You have to slow down and be more alert. And that's a big piece of it. So education, of course, is another piece. Enforcement's another piece. Around schools, we're, we will be installing, and I don't have the list of schools, but we're going to be installing more of the cameras with the automatic infractions. We found that they worked at red lights, so we're going to install some more of those around schools. And finally, the, the whole piece of the, big, of the Be Super Safe campaign is you have education, you have engineering, you have enforcement, you have evaluate, but we're also asking everybody to just think a little bit about other people on the road, care about other people on the road. We're all at one point, most of us are all at one point, drivers or pedestrians. Some of us are bikers at some point. We all bike as kids. Um, we all just need to look out for each other. So that's the big piece of the super safe. So simple question, and I went off on a longer discussion. But I just wanted to touch on all the elements we're focusing on, super safe, to try to make sure that uh, the kids are safe on the way to school. Other questions? Yes, since you were so clear on that, let me, let me ask you a different question. Sure. Uh, unrelated, but great program. Um, spoilers and rumors are flying about uh, you know, maybe they're there. They're going to come here to the next hockey tournament. Oh, you're That's going straight there. there. <laughs> let, me, yeah. let, let me ask you that. Have, have you been you privy been. to any conversations with uh, any officials? <laughs> have you been involved in? Do you know of any? I want you to know that every time I go to a school, particularly down, uh, every time I go to a school and the, and the kids get to ask questions, like they just go straight to the Sonics. <laughs> they just really do. They want to know, hey, Mayor, what are you going to do about getting those Sonics back? Uh, and, and that's important. So our job, to answer your question, I actually am not privy to it, and I usually hold it at arm's length, because uh, our job is to work with the county, work with Chris Hansen and his investor team to have a commitment to build an arena here, and then it's up to Chris and his investor team to get the NBA and NHL team. That's their job. I did visit, as you know, I visited with David Stern at one point, and that was mainly to say, hey, it's a new day here in Seattle, and we want to work together, and we got a good response to that. But other than that, this is this is their job to identify the teams, and, and I'm not getting involved with that. One more real quick. Do you have any plans then on the flip side to come meet with uh, Commissioner of the NHL? You know, I, when I went to the uh, – just, just – for the record, when I went to New York to meet with David Stern, we also had a request in to meet with the NHL commissioner. And but for schedule concerns, that my understanding is we would have met. It just didn't work out in the short window of time that I was in New York. Then. Is an NHL commitment enough to keep the project moving forward since you don't have an NBA team? You're going to have to speak to Chris Hansen. My understanding was the NBA was the harder team to get and was the, the, the bigger piece of the puzzle. But you really have to speak to Chris Hansen on that. I really am focusing on uh, 
Parks, they brought us to schools, there were potholes, that was in the budget, all of those things, and, and completed this arena deal so we can move forward. So before we go any further down, like, any other questions about safe routes to schools, and then I'd be happy to take any of your questions so I can send the kids back to school. Around schools, it's it's the, the challenge we have in our budget is the amount of money we can put into the engineering solutions we need is there's a limit. So we are trying to prioritize first. Generally speaking, on the side streets like this, when you have parking both sides in the narrow street, you do get reduced speeds on the whole. And of course, you see and I see on these side streets there's some people who are trying to take advantage and go faster. And that's a challenge. That's a challenge for us. We would like to make, you know, if we had the dollars, the types of improvements that we were identifying, we'd love to make more of them. And that's a big piece of the neighborhood greenways movement is how do we take those residential streets that are prime carriers of people on foot or on bike and improve them. And that's, I think, the direction we're going. A lot of it comes down to resources. So we're for it, but the, the funding for the engineering changes is, is, is a challenge. Yes, yes. We have a neighborhood street fund, and we, I believe we're increasing the neighborhood street fund a little this year. We might not be. I'll have to double check that. And that's a fund by which uh, neighborhood groups can apply for dollars from the city for a granted program. When I was a neighborhood uh, advocate in Greenwood, I successfully applied for and received neighborhood street funds to reduce speeds on residential streets. There's also a traffic common program, which has a set amount of dollars for traffic circles. And you can also apply for that one. And other folks have used the Neighborhood Matching Fund as well. That's a little more challenging because you have to match it with community dollars or community volunteer hours. And sometimes it's harder, you know, the engineering projects cost dollars, hard dollars, and it's harder to use volunteer time on them. But volunteer planning time can help. There's also, I'd also encourage you to take a look at some of the literature on kind of visual signals that suggest to people that they should slow down. And those can be accomplished on the edges of the right of way and they can make a difference. So there's a, the phrase is, you know, mental speed bumps. You have the physical speed bumps and the physical improvements, but you can do things that create, like right now with all of these kids out here, I guarantee you every car that goes by is going to go a lot slower. And that's a, that's a visual signal that they should slow down. So trying to find other visual signals. Signs oftentimes aren't as good as other things. So researching those types of uh, traffic common things as well, and uh, using a neighborhood street fund or neighborhood matching fund or local local energy to create some traffic common ideas is a good idea. And we've also started a task force now to start looking at, uh, we had a very uh, controversial little incident uh, where somebody built a sandbox in the planning strip, and the question was whether that was allowed or not, and uh, the sandbox builder made the case that the sandbox is a good visual signal to people to slow down. So we're, we're taking a second look at what we allow in the planning strip and right of way uh, in light of that type of analysis. So you might take a look at that too. Now, still talk to us. We'd like you to talk to us, but we'd love to figure out ways to slow things down uh, that are cost effective and that have neighborhood involvement. Okay, yeah. It's breaking into a town hall. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I However, love it. That, uh, um, I also am I'm grateful for the yeah. help that you're giving here around here, and you're giving the fix this way. It's much easier for the school board, except up here on third. Yeah. It's a blinking light on 56 and third, and it doesn't have an actual stop. So, and it's an awkward intersection where cars are coming in at an angle. It, it's, it's I'd ask you to I'd ask you to sit down with our SDOT person to talk about that and talk about what that engineering is. I mean, we, we do we be happy to talk about that and look at that. In fact, I, I encourage kids to walk down to here and it's fine instead of okay. even stopping it because it's so dangerous. Well, let's talk to our, our person from SDOT. Take a look at that. Okay. issue there, I'm wondering from an engineering standpoint, is there some things that we can do to deal mainly with people coming off the hill to slow right. them down in awareness of that light? 
changes to Metro uh, on the 44 bus line along Market Street is supposedly going to be eliminating the bus stop um, on 6th Avenue and Market Street. Right. Our middle school children are picking up bus from that spot, and along with lots of people in our neighborhood. And I'm wondering if, I, I, it's still vague to me if there are actually going to be eliminating that stop or not, but um, I just am wondering okay. about the changes to Metro and how it impacts our uh, middle school and high school children taking the bus. Right, so we do know that more kids are taking the bus because that's the school district policy. Yeah. Is the question, and then if, and then I'll repeat this for the benefit of Seattle County viewers at home. The questions were about the quality of the crosswalk at Market and Sixth Avenue. Sixth Avenue, and then the uh, issue around bus stops and consolidation of bus stops on the Ballard View District Route, the 44. Right. And we've been involved in that one in helping consolidate. And what we found is that consolidation and greater priority for the bus in the right of way can really reduce travel times on the bus and increase bus ridership. And there is a trade-off all the time between the frequency of the stops and the convenience of the stops versus the time of the bus. We're also looking at in-lane stops more uh, to give buses priority, so consolidating stops then helps the rest of the traffic flow. So there's a trade-off to get to your specific answer about that bus stop. I'd have to follow up. I'd ask Becca here to speak to you about that. But I do want you to know what the trade-offs are. We found on the 358, for example, that with a very serious bus stop consolidation, and bus route consolidation, and overall ridership went up dramatically. So the evidence from people loading with their feet is they like the faster, more reliable service and fewer stops. It does, in fact, ride. It, it's a trade-off, and there's there, no question about it. There, the local preschool that's located within this building actually uses that that uh, stop two to three times a month to go on various field trips. Right. So, so it's not only impacting older students, but it's impacting our and this is the trade-off we have to decide to make. Yeah. The degree to which we ask people to walk a little further to a bus stop to get faster and more reliable bus service. It gives us more service hours, too, yeah. overall, because the, when the bus completes a route faster, it can turn around and go again. And that, those types of efficiencies add up when our bus system is so challenged financially. So those are the, those are the, there's, it's a trade-off. I just have, I realize I keep saying that. And, and I know our SDOT engineers in Metro struggle with those trade-offs and try to work with on that specific stop, we'll follow up. On the issue of improvements, and I'm, I'm going to go back to this again, the dollars are so essential for the engineering improvements. We are, we are having a hard time keeping up with our arterial major maintenance. You, you hear the data about how many potholes we build. That's actually a sign of how we're not keeping up with kind of the regular maintenance that prevents potholes. So what? This, I put about 26 million additional dollars since 2011 into street maintenance to catch up, you know, try to you know, do spot improvements, crack sealing, a, a variety of different things. To get to the next step of physical improvements like these greenways programs, uh, we're just really constrained on dollars. So um, I guess this is a little bit of a plea to the listeners and the people here that as you talk to the city and say, we'd like this change to this crosswalk, we'd like to see the painting done more frequently, better signs, more enforcement. We'll work at being as efficient as we can with your dollars and spend them as wisely as we can, but we really are challenged right now um, on, our, on our local transportation funding. So when we come ask you again, I hope you'll help us out uh, because it's really, I think the payoff in terms of safety, quality of life is, is worth it. And, and we, we didn't succeed the last time we asked the public. We're probably gonna have to ask the public again at some point in the future if we make those types of investments. Uh, we can't do it with an existing authority. So with that, I'll close. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you.